This is Dr. Hayek. In this video, I'm going to go over question three from 2016 AP Chemistry exam in the free response part. So the question says, to determine the molar mass of an unknown metal M, a student reacts iodine with an excess of the metal to form the water-soluble compound Mi2, as represented by the equation above. So we have M plus I2 gives Mi2. The reaction proceeds until all of the iodine is consumed. The Mi2 aqueous solution is quantitatively collected and heated to remove the water, and the product is dried and weighed to constant mass. The experimental steps are represented below, followed by a data table. So now if I look at the experimental steps, I can see that I have the mass of empty beaker, and then we add the metal M to it. So we have the mass of the beaker plus the metal M. Then we add iodine. So we have now the mass of empty beaker plus the metal M plus iodine, 127.570 grams. Then we add water to the mixture and the reaction will happen. Now, as I can see that the product Mi2, it will be soluble in water and the excess metal M will uh, appear at the bottom of the flask or the beaker. Now, uh, the uh, solution is collected and then water is evaporated and the tube was heated twice until that the mass of the compound Mi2 uh, it doesn't change so remains constant as we can see it from this table. So now the question is given that the metal M is in excess calculate the number of mole of I2 that reacted. Now to calculate the number of mole of I2 I need the mass of I2. Now, to find the mass of I2, I can just say 127.570 minus 126.549 equals to 1.021 gram of I2. So this is the mass of I2. So what is 127.570? That's the mass of beaker plus the metal M plus iodine and the 126.549, this is the mass of the beaker plus metal M. So I can take this from the table. And now that I have the mass of iodine, I can simply divide by the molar mass and get the number of mole. The number of mole equals to 0 0.004023. Now again, uh, uh, regarding the significant figures, my answer is reported in four significant figures. Now, next question, it says, calculate the molar mass of the unknown metal M. Now, to find the molar mass of the metal M, I need to find the mass and divide it by the number of mole. Now, to find the mass of the metal M, I can use the law of conservation of mass, and I can say the mass of M should be equal to the mass of the compound Mi2 minus the mass of I2, which I calculated in the previous part. So now the mass of Mi2, I can find it from the table. It's equal to 1.284 grams minus the mass of iodine, which is calculated in the part A. So now the mass of M is equal to 0 0.263 grams. And the number of mole that corresponds to this mass, I can find it from the equation. So looking at the equation, M plus I2 gives M I2, I can simply say that the number of mole of metal M equals to the number of mole of iodine. Now remember, we found the number of mole of iodine in part A. So now I can use this number of mole and I get the molar mass of the metal M. So the molar mass is equal to 0 0.263 grams of M divided by the number of mole, which is 0 0.004023 mole. And the answer is 65.4 grams per mole. Now, because the mass is in three significant figures, so my answer is reported to three significant figures. 
Now the next question says, the student hypothesizes that the compound formed in the synthesis reaction is ionic. The question is, propose an experimental test the student could perform that could be used to support the hypothesis. Explain how the results of the test would support the hypothesis if the substance was ionic. Now, we can simply say that the student could dissolve the compound Mi2 in water or could heat it until that it melts and see if the solution or the melt conducts electricity. Now, why is that? Because if the solution conducts electricity, it means that mobile ions capable of carrying charge must be present. Thus, if ions exist, therefore the compound is likely to be ionic. Now, the next question says, the student hypothesizes that Br2 will react with metal M more vigorously than I2 did because Br2 is a liquid at room temperature. The question is, explain why I2 is a solid at room temperature whereas Br2 is a liquid. Your explanation should clearly reference the types and relative strengths of the intermolecular forces present in each substance. Now, the answer is, both Br2 and I2 molecules are nonpolar molecules and therefore the only possible intermolecular interactions within the molecules are London dispersion forces. Now we know London dispersion forces increase with surface area or the size of atoms. So the London dispersion forces are stronger in I2 because it's larger in size with more electrons and or more polarizable electron cloud. When size increases, the polarizability will increase and therefore the strength of the London dispersion force will be higher. Now the stronger London dispersion forces in I2 result in a higher melting point which makes I2 a solid at room temperature. Now let's move on to the next part. It says while cleaning up after the experiment, the student wishes to dispose of the unused solid I2 in a responsible manner. The student decides to convert the solid I2 to I minus anion. The student has access to three solutions, hydrogen peroxide, Na2S2O3, and Na2S4O6, and the standard reduction table shown below. Now the question says, which solution should the student add to I2 solid to reduce it to I minus aqueous? Circle your answer below, justify your answer, and include a calculation of E0 for the overall reaction. The options are H2O2, Na2S2O3, and Na2S4O6. Now to answer this question, I will need to take the reduction half equation of iodine, which is I2 plus two electrons gives two I minus. The standard reduction potential is positive 0 0.54 volts. Now, to try it out with the hydrogen peroxide, so I take the reduction half equation of hydrogen peroxide. Now, as you can see in this equation, hydrogen peroxide is in the product side. So I will need to flip this equation so it becomes oxidation. So now I can see that I can sum I2 with H2O2. However, when this half equation is flipped, the sign of the standard reduction potential, it gets reversed. So now E0 is equal to minus 0 0.68 volts. So now if I sum these two half equations, I get the overall equation, but the cell potential for this equation is going to be equal to minus 0 0.14 volts, and this is negative potential, and therefore this equation is not favored, or we say is not spontaneous. So the I2 cannot be dissolved in H2O2. Now let's try another one. So I'll take the reduction half equation of iodine again and mix it with the 
first equation, which is S4, O6, 2 minus, plus 2 electrons gives 2 S2, O3, 2 minus. Now, since I need the S4, O6 to be in the reactant side, so I cannot flip this equation. But now, these two half equations are reduction half equations, and therefore, they don't sum up. So, Na2, S4, O6 cannot be used to dissolve I2. Now, of course, by elimination, I can say now the answer is Na2, S2, O3. But let's see why. Now, if I need S2, O3, 2 minus to be in the reactant side, I can flip the second reduction equation, and now I have the S2, O3, 2 minus in the reactant side. So, summing these two half equations, I can get the overall reaction, where I can see that the cell potential is positive, 0.46 volts. So now I can say that my answer is Na2S2O3. And this is why, because the reaction between S2O3 to minus aqueous and I2 solid will be thermodynamically favorable because E0 for this reaction is going to be positive. Now a positive E0 means negative delta G0 because the relationship between delta G0 and E0 is delta G0 equals to minus NF E0. Let's move on now to the final part of this question. It says write the balanced net ionic equation for the reaction between I2 and the solution you selected in part E. Now, thanks to the analysis I did for, for, for part E, I can right away write the equation that we are going to get, and that's going to be the I2 solid plus 2S2O3 2 minus aqueous. It gives 2I minus aqueous plus S4O6 2 minus aqueous. I hope this video is helpful to you, so please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.